Hey Math 31, I had a question on section 3.4, number 21. So this was two parts, A and B. The first part was asking us to find f of g of x. Ooh, I lied, g of f of x if I wanna read it correctly. So the first thing I'm gonna do is instead of finding or writing f of x here, I'm actually going to write what that function happens to be equal to for number 21. And they said right up here, right? f of x was equal to the square root of two minus four x. So I have that there, all right? That was my first substitution. And then when I get to this point, I'm gonna use the g rule, right? So this is g of x, if you will, but my x is a pretty ugly, or it's a lot uglier than just x, it's the square root of two minus four x. So the rule said whatever was in the parentheses, go ahead and put it in the denominator in this fraction negative three over, again, whatever was in that parentheses. So if the square root of two minus four x is in my parentheses, I'm gonna put that in my denominator. So that's where I'm getting g of f of x. And the, the next part asks for the domain. So the domain's a little bit trickier. We have to think about the ordering of things. And when I say ordering, I mean, which function came first? Did g or f come first? And if you were computing a number with this, like if I was gonna plug a number in, and when I say number, I mean, instead of g of f of x, if I asked you to do g of f of one, let's say, the first thing you would do is you would plug one in to f. So the first thing I would do is I would plug one, let me change colors so that we can see what's going on here. I would plug one into my innermost function, f of x. So what I need to do is I need to address that domain first. And I mentioned this before, but again, it's so good to repeat it. There are always three domain issues when it comes to math. All right, so there's three domain issues. We can't have fractions where the denominator is zero. All right, I can't have radicals that have an even index, but negative radicand. And I can't have logarithms where the argument is zero or it's negative. Okay, so let's take a look at f of x because that is our innermost function, right? If I look in here, f of x is inside. We would call f of x the inside function and g would then be the outside function. All right, but for f of x, it, it does have a radical, right? It lit up one of my three domain issues. So that's why you see me talking here, writing this here, that I need that, that radicand, right? Because I have an even index of two, I need my radicand of two minus four x to be greater than or equal to zero. Because you're allowed to take the square root of a positive number and the number zero. So when I solve for that, I, I get this inequality, x has to be less than or equal to one half. And if we think about the number line, Right. If I talk about x has to be less than or equal to 1 half, I'll put a marker of 1 half here. Ooh, that's a terrible fraction. I'll put a marker of 1 half here. All right, and because it's less than or equal to, I'm going to shade the number line to the left of that. All right, and then anytime we head left on the x-axis, we get negative infinity. So when I write my intervals up from low to high, I'm going negative 1 half. Oops, that's a lie. Negative infinity to 1 half. And I'm going to put the bracket here because you are allowed to take the square root of zero. All right, so because we're allowed to take the square root of zero, I'll go ahead and include one half. If I wasn't allowed to square root zero, I would put a parentheses, but, but I can. Okay, so then the thing is, that was only the innermost function. We still need to address what happens when we g this thing. So when we do the g of x, let me erase all of this scratch work here. When we take g of x, all of a sudden, we have a fraction in play. All right, so that's the new aspect once we apply the outer function of g of x. Innermost function was just a radical, but the outer function is a fraction. So then I need to make sure that the denominator is not equal to zero. And so I'm just gonna scooch this up a little bit so you can see my work. 
All right, so if the denominator is the square root of 2 minus 4x, I'm going to set that equal to 0 and see where the bad number is. And I say bad number because wherever this radical is 0, that's what would make my fraction undefined. So I'm going to go ahead and square both sides, and I will get 2 minus 4x is equal to 0. I'm going to go ahead and add 4x to both sides. You could also subtract 2. And then I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by 4. So I'll have 4x over 4 is equal to 2 over 4. And you see we're coming up. Whoops, why won't it? What happened there? Um, we're getting to x is equal to 1 half. All right, and maybe you could have seen that right out the gate. It's the same number or it's the same process we got with the radical. But I have to throw x equaling 1 half out of the domain, which is why you now see this as a parentheses. So the parentheses on the 1 half came from the fact that we had a fraction, not the radical. But that is my domain of g of f of x. All right, thanks so much, gang. Bye.